This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, here we are 5,000 miles after taking delivery of our new 2021 Tesla Model Y. Now we had a 2020 Model Y and it was a fantastic car. As a matter of fact, it was one of the first 3,000 cars off the line with a very low VIN number and a lot of fun working through all the issues they had at early production. So it begs the question, after we traded in and got the 2021 Model Y, how much better and how much worse could it really be? The truth of the matter is, this car in initial quality is substantially better than our 2020 Model Y was. Now, sometime in the summer slash fall of 2020, Tesla really did make a lot of enhancements and a lot of improvements on the Model Y platform. And since then, we've seen continued improvements. However, there are still some minor things that still need to be addressed from Tesla. I'll show you some of those quirks on our car. I'm gonna talk about the good things. I'm gonna talk about some of the bad things. So this is gonna be a very real life experience of what it's like to own our second Model Y. Now just a really quick rundown for you. This 2021 Model Y is the long range all wheel drive version. We opted for the Midnight Silver Metallic, which is now a free option by the way and the white interior. We've been dying to have that white interior after we had our black interior on our previous car. We also opted to go ahead and get the seven seat configuration and we got the tow hitch as well. Now the seven seat configuration, we've only used a handful of times so far and it's worked out pretty well here locally, but we definitely got it with the anticipation of road trips needing that extra space. So it does work for us, but there are some limitations to that. Now, quite possibly the biggest issue with this car is something I'm not sure what's causing it, but in the second row of the car, I can actually make a sound on the floor and you can feel the floor buckling and it just seems like something's not secure. I've not pulled back the carpet and I have also not gone through the painful experience of setting up a service visit with our local service center. There's nothing wrong with our local service center. It just with our last car and even this one, service center visits are painful and it takes forever to get your car fixed, at least in my experience. Now this can change depending on the market, but it's an area that Tesla definitely needs to focus on here in the future as more EVs come online. As they start to produce more and more cars, there's going to be more and more needs for service. And of course, although the best service is no service at all, there are going to be times when you need things fixed. And I have yet to have a seamless visit at a service center since owning any Tesla, even the initial one back in 2020. Let's start with some of the things that I really like in this car over the previous one. Now, of course, it does have the updated center console, which has been out for some time now. And this one is just so much easier to use. I personally like it, especially when they announced it. It's just cleaner. It doesn't have all the scratches or attract all the dust that the previous center console had. That's a big plus for me. Another thing that I really like is the flexibility of having that third row. You're not giving up a ton of space. As a matter of fact, it's just a very small compartment where those seats are located if you didn't have the seven seat configuration. Sub trunk itself, although it seems to be slightly different, it's about the same size. So you're not losing substantial cargo space by having the flexibility. Now it is a $3,000 option, so so only get it if you can foresee ever using it, but you're not giving up a lot to have the flexibility of those seats. Those seats are not for adults. Even though some people have shown themselves in there, I'm only 5'6", and my head rests very firmly against the trim of that back seat. So it's not a very great place for adults to sit, and not to mention the leg room is almost non-existent. Now, if you scoot the middle seats forward, you can gain some additional space. However, it is very tight back there. This area is perfect however for toddlers all the way up to maybe 10 year olds smaller children it's perfect for that in addition we also think it's going to come in really handy when we go all the way to texas for thanksgiving and our dog will be back there and again thanks to the sponsor of this episode squarespace Connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content. Manage your members, send email communications and leverage audience insights all on one easy to use platform. 
Create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, and likes. Use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts too. You can display posts from your social media profiles on your website and automatically push website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share it too. So make sure you go to squarespace.com to start your new website. And when you're ready to launch, you can get 10% off your first website or domain purchase. There were a number of updates that Tesla did in 2020 to the Model Y, and this car has all of them. These are really great upgrades that I'm really glad we have. First and foremost is the heated seat. So we're in Indiana. As you can see, the sun has receded for the rest of the year, and having that heated steering wheel is really nice. In addition, the car also comes with a USB drive, which is really nice, but what's better is it's located in the glove box. So it's a secure location. I have a pin on that glove box, so you can't just open it. It's not perfectly secure. If somebody really wants to get in there, they can, but it makes it harder to get in there and it's a little bit more secure. In addition, I really like the auto dimming mirrors on the sides. Some people hate them. Some people love them. I'm one of those people who love them because of the height of the car. If you are in front of a pickup truck or a Suburban, Tahoe, something big like that, the headlights are about the same height as those mirrors. So those lights are constantly shining straight into your face if somebody's behind you. These auto dimming mirrors help tremendously with that experience. The other thing that has made a big difference in my opinion in the car is the double pane windows on the front of the car. It's only the front two doors that have it, but the cabin noise is substantially quieter in this car versus our last one. So that was a great upgrade and I'm certainly enjoying having a quieter cabin in the car. One of the things we did in our last car that I'm still planning on doing this, I don't know why I haven't done it yet, is I put a seal kit around all the doors around the entire car and that did improve the sound inside of the car but also it helped with debris and dirt that gets in between the door jams. So we're planning to do that same thing here in the very near future. In our last car, we got the induction wheels. And as you can see, I have induction wheels on this one. However, my recommendation has continued to be and still is get the Gemini wheels. And the reason is this is a $2,000 upgrade. If you forego that $2,000, put it aside, you can purchase take offset just like these for about $2,500 or any aftermarket option that you so desire. By doing that, you now have two sets of wheels. So if you're in a cold climate, you can have a set for the winter and road trips. And for the summer, you can have your better looking wheels on the car. Now, when we bought this car, we did configure it with Gemini wheels. However, when we sold our previous Y, I swapped the wheels over because I do love the look and I still want to have this look on the car. In addition to these wheels, there is something that people do need to know about, especially if you're in a cold climate. Climate. So with these induction wheels, the tires that come on them, they may work really well in California, but I'm telling you, they work terribly in the Midwest, especially in snow. As soon as the snow started falling, I started to get a real good look at just how sketch this car can be if it doesn't have traction. Regardless of how good the all-wheel drive system is, this thing would not come to a stop. Letting the car use regenerative braking will make it slide all the way to wherever it wants to stop. It is very scary situation. So immediately after I figured that out, I opted to buy new tires that are actually all weather tires. There's something about them that makes them different than all season, but same concept. They actually look a lot like winter tires, but they're not. So these tires have provided tremendous grip in inclement weather. So we put these tires on the previous car when it had 25,000 miles and we sold that car at 40,000 miles. So these tires had 15,000 miles on them when we transferred them over to this car. So let's take a look at how they've worn over that 20,000 miles. As a reminder, we made it 25,000 miles on the previous tires had it not been for traction, I probably could have squeezed out another 5,000 miles out of them safely, and that would have been about 30,000 mile life on the tires that came with the induction wheels. So let's take a look at how these tires are wearing compared to those. So let's take a look at the tread depth now. If we look at the edge, we're looking at six millimeters. Right in the middle, we're looking at six millimeters. So we have 5,900 miles on this car and we've used 1,730 kilowatts of energy in that time. And we've done some supercharging, but it's all been free and there's been some use at home. So if we were to have charged this at home exclusively at our current rate of 12 cents per kilowatt hour, 
it would have cost us about $200 in electricity in that 5,900 miles. Now, if we would have had a gas car and got 30 miles to the gallon, it would have been like $500 plus dollars in gas at current gas prices. Now, here it's about three bucks, maybe a little north of that for gas. So your area may change depending on what your electricity rates are and what your gasoline rates are. The point is the electricity in this car is less than half it is for gas in an equivalent car. Over time, that does add up. Now, that's not going to pay for the premium of this car. However, what does pay for the premium is the residual value of this car. This is like nothing I've ever seen in my entire life. Now, we had our previous Y sold it at 40,000 miles for a couple hundred bucks more than what we paid for it new. Now, I've seen people since then do substantially better than that, and it's incredible to see how these values have held, and it's mind-boggling. Now, that's not just exclusive to Tesla. Many cars are holding higher values than what they were new, but Tesla is certainly in a whole nother ballpark with this stuff. With that said, this car is actually worth substantially more than when we bought it. So it's kind of been interesting to see once you factor in residual value, how much this car actually holds, even though it's more upfront. Total cost of ownership in this car has got to be in the top amongst all cars on the road when you consider at time of selling it when you get rid of the car. The only issue with that is when we sold our Model Y, Lead times were about four to eight weeks, something like that. And right now it's almost a year to get your hands on this car. So that's what's been boosting these resale values up, but it's making it harder for people to sell their existing car and upgrade to the current model. Now we do have some upgrades on the horizon, including 4680 battery cells that are coming with the Giga Austin Model Y, hopefully very soon, a front and rear casted car. This one has the rear casting. And in theory, this whole new platform should yield even more range than the 330 that this is rated for. Now, when we bought this car, it was rated for 326 and now it has 330. At some point earlier this year, they upgraded the base battery pack in the long range version to an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack. So since then, a lot of people have been seeing 330 on their screen or in their app. And that is because it's been sitting there for some time. One of the things that we did with this car that I'm so glad we did from the very beginning is protection. So we put PPS on this car before it even had 30 miles. I wrapped the whole front end with PPF from Dry Protected Shop. I have a discount code for 20% off for any Tesla that you wanna buy this from. These are in Canadian dollars, so make sure you factor that into a conversion rate, but I'm so glad we did that from the very beginning. We've also applied a ceramic coat on this car, and with that, this car is completely protected. I've now made it all the way to the back. I did it in three stages, but I am so glad that I did because I don't ever have to worry about scratches or any issues like that. I can drive through the automatic car wash, let the brushes scrub all over this thing. It's a self-healing film, and I won't have issues with my paint down the road. Now, I did it myself, so I saved thousands, but it does have some blemishes that are very obvious if you look closely. So it's up to you if you're willing to take on that task. And if you are, you stand to save thousands of dollars in doing so. This is the first car I've ever put PPF on. The only reason I've decided to do it is because the front end of this car is not supported with a plastic grill that is generally on the front of a lot of cars and that's what's exposed to all the stuff that gets kicked up on the road. Instead, with the Tesla, it's a big flat painted surface and it is exposed to everything that is getting kicked up on the road. One of the other big considerations with a Model Y or a Model 3 or any Tesla for that matter is should you get full self-driving? Well, finally, Tesla has a subscription service and it's $1.99 a month to have full self-driving on a monthly basis. And of course, you can cancel at any time, reactivate at any time, but I have the subscription model and I now have the beta, which you can get by achieving a 100 or even a 99 safety score at the time of this filming over 100 miles or more, you'll be granted into the beta program. So the beta is far from being ready for wide release. That's why it's a beta. There's still a lot of work to be done, but the more people that enroll and the more people that are providing data to Tesla, the quicker this should, in theory, become a reality. So I'm glad that I have it, but many times I don't use it, especially when there's passengers in the car because it's just uncomfortable as a passenger with full self-driving beta. Now that said, once this thing is fully built out, I would imagine that prices for full self-driving, which are $10,000 today, will go up. So it's up to you if it's something that you want to invest in now, 
or if you wanna wait off. I personally recommend if you're going to do it, get the subscription because full self-driving does not stay with you, it stays with the car. And that's why I've always had to beef with it. You spend $10,000 and then when you go to sell the car, you don't get to take it with you. So it's really hard for me to justify that and that's why the subscription makes perfect sense for us. In our last Model Y, we took so many road trips and we had such a great time in that car. We drove all over the eastern half of the United States. And in this car, we've yet to take a major road trip, uh, but we do have two coming up very soon. So I'm excited to finally get some real miles on this car like we had on our last Model Y. It's something I'm really missing because road tripping in a Tesla is unlike anything you've ever done before. Now, don't be fooled. It does take more time to get to your destination. The rule of thumb that I've figured out over the numerous road trips that we've taken is for every five hours of a normal trip, so if you punch into your map on your phone where you're going and it's five hours away, you should add one hour for every five hours just for charging. And you're gonna do that in 20, 15 minute increments, sometimes 30 minute increments, but on average, it's about an extra hour per five hours. So a 10 hour trip should take you about 12 hours to complete. So that's something that you've really gotta think about if you're patient enough for that. For us, it works great because those frequent stops allow us to stretch our legs plus the autopilot system makes road trips so easy and now that we have full self-driving we can also have it do more things than when we just had basic autopilot basic autopilot worked great full self-driving it's going to change lanes by itself which i'm very much so looking forward to some of the other things that i did right away of course i got the floor mats 3d max buyer floor mats they're the best i have a coupon code for you in the description i am a big fan of them there are some other really good options out there and you can't really go wrong but i highly recommend doing it as soon as you take delivery because the carpet in the car is not very robust and it does start to fray very easily. So get floor mats as quickly as you can. In the very back of this car, being a seven passenger, there's not a lot of options on the market today. It's actually really nice because you can pull up one of the seats and leave the other one down and the mats kind of move on their own. So that way they don't bunch up and you can still move them around without issues. So really liking these floor mats for the cargo space in this car. And we'll probably leave those there. But the 3D Max Spiders are everywhere else in the car. I've got it in the front, on the floors, all that stuff. So big fan of them and highly recommend that you check those out as well. Another more recent purchase, this AutoSonus wireless phone charger actually is kind of cool. A lot of phone holders and a lot of phone chargers that sit up on the dash, your phone shakes a lot. And one of the things I really like about this is it is built in and integrated. So you're actually gonna be replacing an entire piece of trim behind your steering wheel. It's a super easy install. It took maybe 20 minutes to do this. It seems like it's a little bit more cumbersome than it actually is. It was super easy to do. But what's nice is it holds the phone very firm up there. And because of its location, if you want to use Waze or any other apps, it's right there in front of you so you can see it very easily. Rather than some of the other options where you have it throughout the cab and there's other good places to put it but there's no question I'm a big fan of this one and I believe I have a discount code for that as well in the description for you to check out and then who can forget the auto frunk now this is the hand show one this is version 5 so they've had five versions of this for the model Y as they continue to improve the design and make it more robust this is something we did in our last car and as soon as we did it, I couldn't believe how much I actually appreciated having it. It's something you don't realize how much you miss having until you don't have it. So this hand show auto Funk is pricey. I do have a discount code that will help cover some of that, but it is something that we use frequently, especially on road trips. So love having it. It's up to you if it's something you want to get. It is DIY friendly ish. There are some tight spots that you have to get into, but it's not that hard to do. So I do have a video of how to do the previous version. The new version is not much different than that one. So you can check that out and make the decision for yourself. And then finally, just overall, this again has been a home run for us. The previous Model Y that we bought in 2020 provided us with a car ownership experience unlike anything we've ever had before. The car is quick, it's efficient, it has access to the best charging network in the entire country and it's fast, it's fun to drive, and it is beyond safe. It's one of the safest cars on the road. All those things combined bring you a very nice experience, not to mention the seats are super comfortable. And speaking of that, 
The white interior was something that we put off on the first order. And after seeing so many people have no issues maintaining their seats, we decided to go for it, get the white seats and think that we could do well. I put a ceramic product on there to keep them protected. And so far we have had no issues. And that's with a five and three year old that sit in the back all the time. So if you like the white interior, I say go for it. So far, baby wipes have been all we've needed to clean up messes or anything that's on the seats. We don't have any stains or any issues that we haven't been able to deal with so far. Now that said, it's just now getting cold, so wearing jeans has just kicked off. So we'll make sure to keep an eye on how that jean transfer works and if it's easy to clean up because it's something you can't avoid at the end of the day. So with all that said, there are options coming on the market that I'm hoping Hoping, hoping will be more compelling than what's available today. And as they become available on the market, the Model Y should continue to see more enhancements and become an even better car than it is today. That's something unique at Tesla where they don't wait for model years to make changes to their cars. And I'm excited to see what the future holds for the Model Y. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Of course, if you did, give it the thumbs up. If you haven't already, of course, subscribe to the channel as we continue to post content regularly. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Bearded Tesla. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll catch you next time.